Hi, Harriet here from Quilting with Harriet. I'm going to start a series of videos to introduce you to your Pro Stitcher, Pro Stitcher Basics. We're going to start from the very beginning and we're going to push buttons that you may have no idea what they do or um, you've, you've done it, but you don't know why it's doing what it's doing. So today I'm going to start with the basics and we're going to be putting blocks into areas and I'm going to show you several different ways to place your blocks. So let's get started. Pro Stitcher is a three-step process. You have on the top row, you have your file folders. That's your filing cabinet. You open the drawer, there's your folders. You pick a folder and then you figure out what you want to do with it. You open it up and, and this is what's in your folder. So every tab that I hit, I'm going to get a different set of papers in my folder. So as you can see, not everything is highlighted because I don't have a design open on my screen. So I'm going to pick out a folder and I'm going to then choose something on the ribbon bar to go with that folder. And then I'm going to come over here to my workspace, the third part of it, and I'm going to follow the commands on my workspace. So let's start by getting a design. So file folder, file, design in my ribbon bar. And now there's a drop down menu. There's an open and you see some blocks here already. These are blocks that I've used recently. So Pro Stitcher saves like the last nine or 10 blocks and then it always drops one off and adds the next one that you're doing. So it's a quick access to, um, if you're working on several blocks at a time, you can just come in here instead of going back into the folders. So I'm gonna go file, design, open, and it's gonna open up my, um, my files here. I'm gonna be in Pro Stitcher Designs. You can see that it's green and I'm in blocks. So here are all the blocks that are under Pro Stitcher Designs and I'm gonna use my square four by four. Now everything here is in alphabetical order, but since I use this one so much for teaching, I, I selected it and saved it again with an, and renamed it with an A at the beginning. So it's at the top of my screen here. So I'm going to double click on this and it's going to open my square four by four. So now what I want to do is I want to create an area. So I'm going to come up to my file folder here and I'm going to select the area folder. And you can see that I've got some new commands here. I'm going to go to two corner. I need to, I'm on my simulator on my laptop. This is a program that you can download directly from ProStitcher.com and you can save it on your hard drive. It looks exactly like your tablet. You can take it to your living room on your laptop. You can sit and you can play with the buttons and you can design quilts and then you can save things to a USB, put it into your tablet and um, quilt them out. So since I don't have my actual machine head, I'm going to hit my simulate button. And that's going to allow me to move my crosshairs. So now this is my needle on my, on my machine. So I'm going to move up to the top here and I'm going to select two corner. And then I'm going to take my crosshair and I'm going to move it down here to the bottom and I'm going to hit two corner. Let's get that a little bit more even there. Two corner. Okay. I'm going to move this out of the way and you can see that I have a square here. Now, if you look over here in your workspace, this area coincides with this area here. So you can see the size of the area. And you, this is very important right here, this point count. You can see that I have four points. So I'm going to take a design and I'm going to place it in this box. So I'm going to go File, Design, Open. And I'm going to choose a design. Let's choose... Uh, let's choose this block 15 here. I'm going to double click on it. And now you can see that up here at the very top, it tells you what the design is, block 15, and it tells you the size, 11 by 11. If I come over here to my workspace, I now have a tab that says design, another tab that says area that tells me the size of my area and my point count. 
and I have a tab that says workspace and it tells me everything that's open on my screen. So my square four by four, my area and my block 15. So now to get that block into my area, I'm gonna go back up to my file folder. I'm gonna to go to modify. I'm gonna to go to skew and I'm gonna let the machine do the work for me. I'm gonna hit skew over in the workspace and now I'll refresh my screen. And you can see that it fits in my block perfectly. So it's ready to stitch out. Now, if I clear my area, watch what happens. I'm going to go back to area and I'm going to go clear. See how that pattern jumped out of that box? So that's because I did not save the change that I made to that pattern. So let me go back to where I have it in the box and with my area. Now, if I want to save the changes that I made to this 11 inch block, which is now four inches, I'm going to come over here to baseline. And you can see it dropping down over here. What baseline does is it freezes the change that you made to this block. So now when I go back to area and I clear it, you can see that it stays the same size. It's still four by four. Okay. So let me get rid of, let me close this block out. I'm going to go file. All I want to do is close the selected block, but I still want to leave my quilt block in the background. I'm going to close the selected. Okay. If I was to close my workspace, it would take everything off my screen. So I just wanted to close my, um, my pattern. So now we're going to go back to area and we're going to use another button called multipoint. So let me get my crosshair up to the top here and I'm going to go multi-point and I'm going to go follow my, my seam line of my quilt block that's on my quilt on the frame and I'm going to go around my block. That's three points, one, two, three points. And now here's point number four. And you see when I hit point number four, it closes up the left-hand side here. So I have four points, which gives me a square. I'll go back and get my pattern again, file, design, and let's get that block uh, 15. And we'll go modify. Skew is active because that's what I had already pushed before. And I'm going to say skew. And there it goes into my block. Okay, now I'm going to clear that again, file, clear my, um, close my design, and I'm going to go back to my area. I can go over here, or I can go to my workspace and click the tab here, and I can clear my area. That still just leaves my 4x4, four four, my quilt block. Okay, let's go back to multipoint, and let's get my crosshair over here. And we're going to go multi-point and we're going to pretend that our block is a little bit misshapen here. And I'm following my points. I'm following the seam of my, my quilt block that's on my frame. Now you can put in as many points as you want into your, your area, into your block. Remember circle is 360 degrees. That's 360 points. So you can do as many as you want. I'm getting a little obscure here just to prove a point to you, just to show you what I'm doing. All right, there's my quilt block. All right, this is from my 92-year-old customer who still loves to piece, and we let her. We love her. Okay, so now if I look over here in my point count, I have 11 points. 11 points. Let's get our pattern back out again. File, design. We'll use this. Uh, let's use the feather block that I used before. Okay, so now we're going to go up to modify and skew is active because I didn't use any other um, buttons on the on the line and I'm going to say skew. Now that's not really pretty, is it? What happened there? Well, skew allows you to use four points only, but we used 11 points if you remember. So I'm going to use this border skew. And look how beautiful that looks in there. Not really, but 
it worked. So you can see that the pattern, when I used border skew, the pattern follows the area exactly and gets all those um, feathers right up to that border there. So skew is for four points, and we definitely had more than four points. We had 11, so we're going to use border skew. Okay, so that, that's the difference in multipoint with the skew and the border skew. Always, 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 you can check your, your area and, and check how many points you have. And if you have more than four points, you know that you need to use border skew. All right, let's clear that area. And remember, I didn't baseline it. I didn't save it. So it went back to its original size, which is just fine. I'm not going to use it again. If you're going to use it over and over, you can always baseline. Okay, so I'm going to close my pattern. And I'm going to select my square so you can see it oh, square four by four okay we'll put it in the middle there this refreshes your screen it makes it bigger and now i'm going to pretend that i have a block that's an odd shape and i have to create an area for it so um let's go ahead and go to area and do our two corner i'll turn my simulator on and we'll do two corner and two corner okay and we'll get out our feather block again okay now if skew or border skew does not work for a pattern sometimes you'll find that sometimes you might have a trapezoid or a pentagon or some odd shape on your quilt that you want to fit a pattern into um, and the skews don't work, you need to know how to manipulate the pattern to get it to fit where you want it to fit. So I'm going to use this key that says align on my ribbon bar. Now over here in my workspace, you can see that I have some new commands, no align, center. I have a horizontal align and a vertical align. So I'm going to center this feather block in my area. And you can see that it's centered it in there. Now it's still too big, so I'm going to have to come over here to modify and resize. And so now you can see I need to move the height and the width together. So I'm going to lock the lock up here so that both the height and the width move together. And I'm going to use my minus key. I'm just going to keep my, my mouse on it make this a little bigger so you can see it getting close oh that looks pretty good okay now sometimes you might have to rotate it so you can come over here to rotate and this is a 45 right here so you see it put it on point now I can resize this and I can put it in there on point if I wanted to so let's let's see what that looks like Perfect. Okay. But if I come back here to rotate, let me go back and undo. Let me go back to rotate and rotate it back to the 45 and resize it again. This time we'll go up because I resized it down. Okay. Now, sometimes you may just have to rotate just a little bit. And my buttons are cut off here at the bottom, but I can see the tip of it. So these buttons down here under rotate um custom rotate will give you just small little increments so you see how it's just moving ever so slightly and sometimes you just need to do that in your box and then another feature that you can use under modify is reposition and sometimes you need to nudge that pattern a little bit So you see, you have a lot of choices to make that block fit in there perfectly. If you have a minute, watch my border and corner video. It will show you how I used a line and resize to take a corner pattern and fit it into an L border. So you have your border here and your border here, and you just need to get that corner so you can add the borders. Well. I show you how to do that with a line and resize. 
So if you have a minute, be sure to watch that video and that'll make it align a little bit clearer. And one more that I have to, to show you. So let me clear my area. Um, let me close my, I'm going to leave my area there. And I'm going to close the pattern. And now I'll get it back out again, the feather block. And I'll show you the last way to put a block into an area. So on your quick access bar over here, you have something called X form. Now when I push this, see how I get handles? all the way around. You can rotate this block. This is, um, sometimes it's fun to do and we'll do an exercise in, in, um, later down the road where I'm going to use the handles. So I'm just going to take my finger or my cursor and I'm going to, whoops, it's a little bit too big. I'm going to center my pattern in the block as best as I can. And now we have a lock down here where if you look at the area, area tab, um, uh, sorry, resize tab, you see the lock is on here. We can turn the lock on here as well. And it sizes the whole thing. Now if I turn the lock off over here, I can size one side or up and down, or the corner a little bit. So you see you can get your pattern into your block several different ways. Let me leave, move my crosshairs out of the way so you can see. The X form went off because I pushed another button, so I'll turn it back on. And now there you have it. Okay, now to turn X form off, if I hit the button, it does not deselect. So I just have to select something else. And then you can see that my pattern is in there. Well, it could use a little bit more work, but you get the idea. Okay, so in this video, we learned about the three-step process of Pro Stitcher. We have our file folders. We have our ribbon bar and we have our workspace. And now over here, we have our quick access bar. And I'll talk about that as we go down the road. But these are just some easy ways to get your blocks into your quilt. I always create an area for every new block that I'm going to do because fabric moves. And when you quilt one block, you're moving that fabric. You're compressing all the layers together. So if you were to do just put several blocks into your quilt block on the frame, um, they might not be even when you get to the third or fourth block. So I like to do each block individually as if I've never done it before and it comes out right every time. Another thing you wanna think about when you're creating your area is I'm going to, let me get rid of this pattern real quick. You can create the area around your, around your block. Let me get my pattern selected. You can create it right along the seam line, or you can use your foot, you can use the edge of your foot, which is a quarter inch away from your needle and you can leave a little bit of gap. So let me clear that again so you can see, and I'll kind of just simulate that. So I can go around my quilt block and just put the edge of my foot on that seam line so that I have a little bit of play on the sides in case I do have a little bit of a wonky block and I don't want it to come right out to the seams. So that's another way to set your area. Well, I hope you liked this video. Hit the like button. Be sure to subscribe and hit the bell so that you'll be notified when the next video is up. The next video I think I'm going to do, we're going to put triangles into um, patterns into triangles, and I'll show you different ways to do that as well. All right. Be sure to um, hit the like button on your way out. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon. Bye.